Hello, and welcome to the Brutal Iron Gym Podcast, where our goal is to cut through the BS and deliver the brutal truth about topics related to health and happiness. Today's podcast number 2177, and Meredith is here. Hello. (laughs) Hello. So we just got back from the first show. So this is your first show wrap-up. And that was the Ruby... Ruby Classic? Yeah, was it Championship or Classic? The word Ruby was in there, and I believe we were in Florida. (laughs) So those were the things that I think that mean the most, yes. Pretty sure it was a Ruby class. Yes, I think that was it. And then um, we did well. So our first, uh, like our goals here is we had this show, then we have another one next weekend. Mm -hmm. And that one, thankfully, is more in our home turf, Mm -hmm. not so much traveling. And we wanted to, between these two shows, earn uh, qualification for nationals. Then we would finish dieting and crush nationals. Yes. So that's exactly what we actually did here in the first one. So we qualified for nationals, even got first place in the masters Mm -hmm. like category, which was pretty badass and fun. So masters. Yes, I know. You were like, so I won something because I'm old. (laughs) Yeah, masters is over thirty five, which is just mind blowing that it masters isn't over. Yes. 55? Like masters feels like it should be senior citizens. Like everybody should be posing with canes. (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah we did we we got our goal very yeah. cool yeah so now next weekend is just for fun mm-hmm. uh and more practice and stuff but yeah everything's like we did it congratulations we did it very 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 exciting now the fun begins of like yeah getting a little more intense in the diet kind of finishing everything up yeah so we can be peeled for yeah. nationals well you speak about it really well in science Do you want oh, well, to talk about what the goal was for this first show? Like, talk about the window of leanness? Like, I yes. looked good, but I was not yeah. peeled. I yes. was, I, and I couldn't be. So Yeah, we wouldn't have, like, that would have been bad. That would have been bad. Yes. So let's talk about that a little bit. I like that. So mm-hmm. there is a, um, there's an in shape enough to do well at a regional competition. Mm-hmm. But that same in shape enough for a regional competition is not good for nationals. Correct. <laughs> Nobody would ever like laugh you off the stage, but you would. A person who uh, is in like regional shows, you find the best of the best. Like at the Ruby, there were like two people that really stood out to stood us. Stood out. The yeah. best condition by far was the, one of the females in wellness. Mm-hmm. So she looked like she was nationals ready, but she looks like. They stand out. Like, there's a crowd of people, and then you can, like, visually see that one person. You're like, holy crap. Like, oh, like shit. what are they? And, like, what do they do? That looks so different. Yeah. Uh, but when you go to nationals, it's all of those. Yeah. They all look like that. <laughs> yes. So it's kind of like um, in, like, sports, if you have somebody who is, you know, like a top recruit at your high school, and then they go to, like, the University of, like, Georgia or Alabama, and they're, like, third straight. <laughs> so it's kind of like when you when the pond gets a little bigger, the biggest fish is, isn't so big. Yeah. Um, so we knew that you were lean enough to do a regional show, but we couldn't have shown up at this one as lean as we possibly could be and then hold that for five weeks, mm-hmm. which is when nationals is. Mm-hmm. So there is, as you alluded to, a window where someone's in good enough shape and you can compete then. And then you continue to get leaner by the end of the show, like the end goal. But if you hit the first show as lean as possible, you can't possibly sustain that for five weeks. Mm -hmm. So the CNS goes nuts, too much cortisol, the body stops responding. You would need an insane amount of drugs that, you know, illegal and otherwise, Mm -hmm. (laughs) to try to maintain that. And even people at Olympia level where they can take whatever they want to take, they don't even do that because they know that you can't hold a peak physique for that long. Five weeks is a very long time. Yeah, it's on the edge of what like most coaches would recommend. I'm sure there are people who've done it, but it's not the norm. And uh, it would be a, a huge health impact. Yeah. So we don't want any of that stuff. We want to do this and be healthy and happy. <laughs> so we were doing this to celebrate your 40s and just being a total badass. So we don't want to end at 40s. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and you have to, well, at least I needed to, I don't have an ego, but, uh, how do I say going into the show and getting on stage, knowing I'm not as lean as I could be. No, knowing, okay, there is, we are following a plan, Mm -hmm. hit the target of the plan. We are on track for the plan, but I am not 
as lean as I need to be. Yeah. And that's very hard. Yeah. To get on stage knowing that. Yeah, it was necessary, so I commend you on accepting it. Yes. And then I I personally wouldn't view it as being ego based as much as anything you do in life, you want to do your best at it because you believe what you do represents who you are. Yeah. So to do something and say, well, this isn't my best, Yes. therefore it violates my nature of everything I do, my, I do in my best. That's a very good way to say it. Yeah. So mm-hmm. we knew that we had to step on stage at like 90, 95% maybe, you know. And That's tough. That, that was, was mentally just, tough. Especially yeah, you have to accept it. That well, I, like I couldn't stop looking at that wellness girl. Yeah. Like she just looked so good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, Rob, look at her glutes. Yeah. Look at, look at her. Look. That's amazing. And yeah. then I'm like 90% done. Yeah, you're like, how would it look like that? And I'm like, well, you will, just not just, today. Just not today. I'm like, ah! Yeah. Yeah. It's also funny for me to tell my husband to look at some girl's glutes. Yes. But that's also the fun of like, if anybody hasn't gone to these shows, you're you're sculpting a body and it becomes like kind of like the the art of it is an the art. process. So when you look at like a girl in a bikini, you're not looking for like, you know, any, I don't know, what's the word, lewd purposes or whatever, I don't know what the proper word would be. Yeah, it's like, not the normal intent. Yeah. You like switch, you're looking at it from a physiology, an anatomy perspective. Yeah, like she's done a really good job of building her lower glutes. I wonder if she does a lot of like staggered stance or anything else. Yes, exactly. <laughs> like exactly. how did she sculpt in that I was way? like, her abs are on point and yeah. her glute, like she looked perfect. Yes, yeah. And um, that's the fun of that. Like there was a dude there who was like, incredibly not, peeled super peeled yeah and that was impressive and like I was telling you I think I have the fun of in my trainer brain trying to like okay of all the approaches I know and of all the client backgrounds that people could have before they start a contest prep what was the combination that led to that person looking that good so for example I have worked with people who are all year all their life at like 10% body fat Mm-hmm. And they just struggle to build muscle. So then when they get on stage, people are like, oh my God, how did you get your skin so thin? And they're like, well, just be 10% body fat for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, you can't beat that. You know, if, you, if you're coming and you're dieting down like 30, 40 pounds, your skin will not be as thin as someone who has been 10% body fat their entire life. Yeah. And that's just the, the nature of the game. But at the same time is the person who's been naturally heavier might find it easier to build muscle tissue Mm -hmm. than the person who's naturally leaner. Mm -hmm. So there's ectomorph, mesomorph, endomorph, all that stuff. But there are body types, and every body type has a a pro and a con. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so that that was mentally tough. I thought I looked okay. Clearly. You qualified for nationals. I I thought I looked okay. But it was also... I need to, I like you said, I always want to do everything the best I can. Yes. Right? I don't like settling for less than best. Yeah. And this was very good practice to refine that mm-hmm. skill. Well, it's like the understanding and, of what is the true process. Yeah. And to also beat it into my head that I was looking back through my journal that week because mm-hmm. we, we took Friday off. We had to relax. Everything was timed. There was a lot to do that day. And I was going back through my journal and I said, oh my God, April something of this year. Yeah, I think it was April 6th or April something. April 6th of this year was my second workout of the year. Yeah. My second workout. So by April, I had only worked out two times. Yep. And that's when I said, I'm never, I'm never going to put myself first and work out clearly mm-hmm. work. The job I had at that time had me really depressed. Um, it just wasn't a good space, Yeah. but looking back and saying, saying second workout and then really thinking about that for a month and making the decision to compete. In yeah. a brand new class I've never done before. Mm-hmm. So meaning we had to shape change you. And on yeah. top of that, the last three and a half years, I wasn't training for growth. No. Like even back to 2019. Like how much did you no. really weight train in 2019? I didn't. My, that was the year my dad died. Yeah. So, so I you didn't, didn't even work out in 2018. Didn't work out in 2020 because nope. of chaos in life. The only thing we did in 2020 was get me from 
feeling like a blob into my wedding gown. That's true. We so did do like we, dieting, but it wasn't training. We dieted. It was it was controlling. Well, it's funny. I lost ten pounds. Yes, and what people will like about this is oh no the the best part of twenty twenty in regards to what I could help you with yeah was to avoid not eating yes because it's like oh my god I'm getting ready for like a wedding I feel like you know, fat in my dress, let me just eat nothing. Yeah. And I, I was like, that isn't going to work. I promise that's not going to work. I've tried starvation. I was anorexic for two and a half years. I've trained we, so many clients who have eating disordered backgrounds, yeah. and we both have that background as well. Yeah. So it's like we know intuitively, like now, that starving yourself does not work. Correct. So my job was, okay, we need to eat at least this much every day, these kind of foods, and... You know, if you can go for a walk after work, great. Yeah. But there was no weight training. No, it, there was none. there was even walks. Like maybe well, you got twenty minutes of cardio. You in. built me the uh, the desk that fit on the walking treadmill. Yes, that uh, boat. Flex, what was that called? The, it wasn't a. Oh no, that was tread climber. Tread climber. That's yeah, the tread was. climber. Yeah. So you you built me a desk that went on the tread climber, so I could all I did was walk. Yeah. While working, and that was the only thing I could do for the wedding. Yeah, I think it was only like 20 minutes, and it was sporadic. Like, some weeks you got three times, some week was five. Yeah. It was just We did chaos. good. Like, I fit into the dress, and they ended up having to take it in. Yeah, you went from a size 10 to a 4, and then you take the 4 in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And I still, like, looking at the wedding photos, you know it's true love, because I love looking at the photos, because it was you and me, and it was, like, yeah. the best day ever. But I did not look the way I would have wanted to look in a wedding gown. Mm-hmm. And so on top of that, and then my mom's stroke and just the chaos of so many other things and applying for school, like I was not training to train. There was one month or two months out of the five years (laughs) we've been together where I I started to train squats again. Oh, yeah. And then you get like a 275 PR. 275 PR for a couple reps. Because you're insane. And so that was like a fun two months. And then I stopped again. Yeah, that's right. We tried CrossFit mornings mm-hmm. for a little bit. So, so we tried a lot. Like, we tried a lot. We experimented we a lot. But nothing was consistent. No. So you had, like, basically four and a half years of no lifting. So then to yeah. all of a sudden decide, let's let's see if we can compete and get on stage. Yeah. And we ended up making it to nationals. Like Yeah, that's pretty ridiculous. That's, that's not common. Yes. So congratulations on that because it shows the dedication you have put in Very happy in the last uh, 24 weeks. Yeah. yeah. I, I really like my shape much, much better now. Well, I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, you did really well. I'm very happy for you. Yeah. And what was fun uh, is it was our first show together. So yeah. you know a lot about me. Yes. So I got to learn. You got to learn more about me. Yes. During the prep, we got to learn how to control your cortisol. Yeah. And then on Friday... Good God. <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. So the quick version, because uh, we could spend a whole podcast just on that. Hell, let's, let's yeah. not the do a quick version. version. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so one method that people will use uh, for peaking someone for a bodybuilding show. There are a lot of methods, by the way. Um, you just kind of have to take what you think makes sense, try it, and then that's why people do multiple shows. And uh, you refine it as you go. So as a coach who has trained people for like one show only, but then I've also have athletes I've trained for like 10 plus shows, is um, you're going to take some educated guesses, but they are guesses. And then as you would do multiple shows with somebody, you learn a little bit more, you fine tune things, you, you, you get everything refined to what is the best approach for that person. So for you, we've been eating carbs the entire diet. We haven't ever gotten rid of carbs and we haven't done any cardio so we knew that coming into friday it's like okay her body's stressed from a you know caloric deficit a chronic caloric deficit for 24 weeks Mm -hmm. but we don't have as much stress as somebody might have if they're doing an hour two hours of fasted cardio and we're not switching from a keto diet to all of a sudden trying to carbohydrate load, which would not be an appropriate method to use. Awful. You don't want to switch food choices like that drastically. Mm-hmm. So we're like, okay, we're already doing carbs. Let's just eat a little more carbs mm-hmm. as we uh, also salt those carbs so you have normal sodium. And then we would slowly drink less fluid. Mm-hmm. The idea of that is in order for your body to digest food, it uses water. Mm-hmm. And then... When you present your body with carbohydrates 
at a level above what you need for basic energy. It doesn't immediately get stored as body fat. It gets stored as glycogen, which mm -hmm. is carbohydrates combined with sodium and water in your muscle cells. And it's like having basically like fuel in the muscles for activity. So you have a gasoline, like you have a gas tank in your car to, to fuel your car. So our muscles have what's called glycogen stores, and you can store carbohydrates in the muscles, and that's essentially energy that the muscles can use. Mm -hmm. We know that, okay, there's a certain amount of carbs your body's just going to burn through and use to provide daily energy. Then there's this window where you can eat a certain amount and your body will store it as glycogen. Then at the top of that window, if you eat too much, it stores as fat. So mm -hmm. our goal was to eat within the window that gets stored as glycogen mm -hmm. because that fills the muscles up. It's like filling like a water balloon with water. It puffs the balloon up. Yeah. So we want to puff the muscles up against the skin. And then as you're drinking less fluid, the body would then use the fluid between the muscle and the skin to process food and to form the glycogen. So the water switches from being under your skin to now inside the muscles. So that thins the skin out and it pushes the muscles against the skin and everything looks great. Mm -hmm. So that is carb loading in a very summarized way. Mm -hmm. uh, so we did that on Friday, but your body had a different idea. <laughs> So basically what happened was yep. your body, uh, the cortisol response, the stress response. We had a pretty good day on Friday. Uh, by the end of Friday, you were looking pretty good. We got the tan on. We even have a photo on Instagram. The back was pretty good details. You weren't pumped up at all. So there's no veins protruding yet. We hadn't had any sugar, so there's no veins pushing out to the skin. Uh, but it looked the way it should have looked when we went to bed. Then the challenge was... On Saturday, the show was not managed properly for time schedule-wise. A hundred percent shit. There you go. That's I would honest. never, <laughs> ever recommend that show. Yeah. And I would never do that show again. Yes. So part of the problems is there was an athlete's meeting at 8 a.m. at the venue, which was different than the host hotel. The host for hotel where tanning and makeup. Where tan makeup. And they'd never told anyone about the athletes' meeting. It wasn't and it was on a website. No one even told us when we checked in the day before. Mm -hmm. It was just word of mouth. You just hear athletes saying like, "Oh, did you hear that? There's you know this meeting at 8 a.m." It was someone. It was someone doing the tan that told me. I said, "Wait, what?" Yeah. Because we had makeup at seven. Okay, well we can get makeup done, maybe thirty minutes, and make it over there. Well, they didn't even take me to do makeup until 7.30 because they were running so late. Yeah, so that's the challenge. Like the hair and the makeup, we only did makeup. And then nobody were... in that room even knew there was an athlete's meeting. No, and they never made it. I know they didn't make no, it. No, no we didn't it. make it. Yeah, but um, so the hair and makeup people, they said to a lot, 45 minutes, if you're getting both hair and makeup done, mm -hmm. we were only getting makeup done, mm -hmm. and we had scheduled it at 7. Mm -hmm. So we're like, okay, well... If there is that 8 o'clock meeting, let's just go there and be there in case it is. And if we're starting at 7, we should be fine. Well, they didn't take us till 7, like 20-something. Mm -hmm. um, it was like 7.24 because I was looking at the clock. Yep. And then you weren't out of there until like 7.55, so there's no way. We missed the meeting. And then when we got to the venue, they were very snarky about us missing the meeting, which was not appreciated. It was yes. awful. I'm like, you dicks. It's not freaking posted <laughs> anywhere. Yes. You're an idiot. Yeah. Like, how you for you to have this much confidence and yell at everybody? Oh, like yeah. I, maybe it's just us because before I ask any questions or get snarky about anything, I fact check like crazy mm -hmm. to be sure I didn't f up. Yeah, we want to make sure we're not at fault. If I'm if I'm gonna get an attitude because I don't usually get an attitude yeah, too often. Yeah, we don't. But if I'm going to, I do not want to stick my foot in my mouth. Right. So um, and then yeah, and then by the time we were there, there was a huge line for folks to buy general admission tickets. Mm -hmm. So then to make it back to the meeting, they wouldn't let you go back with me. You had to buy a band, which yeah. also no one told us. Yeah, no one told Why us Why were coaches' that. bands not sold at the host hotel? The night I before, that would have been great whenever you're gonna see all the coaches. <laughs> would have been amazing to <laughs> do that. Yeah. At, maybe you do that at freaking athlete check-in. Yeah. Idiots. Yeah. So that was rough. So then you couldn't come back with me. And then by the time we did get back, you did get back with me. I think, what, six people asked you about your freaking band? Oh, and that was And we wild. were trying to figure yeah. out what is even the schedule of the show. People in the backstage were yelling at men to get ready. And, well, what's the order? 
No one around us knew the order. They didn't post the order until the show had already started. Yes. They, they taped it to the wall five minutes after it was started. <laughs> yes. And it was in reverse order of every other show. Yeah. And that's the fun of regional shows is there's no, there's no set format for bodybuilding shows. Mm-hmm. When you go to national levels and pro shows, there's going to be more consistency. But regional ones, it's just, I mean, you take a rant, like just blindfold, select things how we're going to go, and who knows. Mm-hmm. But um, so we ended up, we rushed in there. Everything was chaotic. Mm-hmm. Everybody was stressed. All, like, all competitors were stressed. All competitors were stressed. Yes. And then we find out that, like, okay, once we rush to get your suit on, shoes on, get all this stuff ready, then we find out that we're not getting on stage for two and a half hours. And it's like, well, what the hell? Mm-hmm. And then we needed to get a van. But yeah. my body reacted to all of that because it was yeah. complete and total chaos. Complete and total chaos. Yes. Um, so what happened was your body dumped all of the water from yes. the muscle cells. Yep. Uh, and this is a response, of scientific response to cortisol. <laughs> so is it dumped all the water from the muscle cells and put it under the skin. Yep. And that's a, in a sense, kind of a protective mechanism, and there's reasons why the body does that. Mm-hmm. Uh, but what happened was your muscles deflated, and now we looked incredibly watery. I was so pissed. So you add whatever body fat you would have, and then a shit ton of water yeah. <laughs> all around that. Yeah. So we definitely did not look our best. No. And then it was like my job of how do I save this? Mm-hmm. But at that time, when I'm thinking about how to save this, I didn't know we had two and a half hours yet. Right. So I'm like, how do I save this in 15 minutes? Right. And there's not many options. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, you know, so I had you start to like, you, we, we were using part, some of the food we brought as like for weights for lateral raises. Because I was like, we have got to at least. I was least, doing lateral raises with cans of apple. Filling. Yeah, I was like, we got to at least pump up the muscle because that'll at least start to pull some, like some of the fluid will start to go into the muscle, mm-hmm. at least from out of the skin. Maybe you'll have to pee really fast if we move enough. Mm-hmm. The body will dump the water from the skin. You'll have to pee and hopefully we can do that real quick because we didn't put a bikini bite on yet. Right. Because we were waiting to see if we had to do that yet. Yeah. Uh, good gosh. But it was a little chaos. So what happened was our carb loading on Friday went well until Saturday. Saturday, your body freaked out reasonably, so cortisol dumped into your system. We lost all that effect. So we did pre-judging, looking the worst we could possibly look. Yeah, I was pissed. Yes, and that's when, uh, for those of you who don't know competitions, it doesn't make any sense. So, you know, know that as I'm about to say what I'm about to say. (laughs) Is pre-judging is when they do the judging. (laughs) And then later in the day, you have finals, which is when they don't judge anything. (laughs) <laughs> There's a little caveat to that. But pre-judging, I don't know why it's called that because that's actually when they judge you. Yeah. Um, but that's when positions and placements are made and set, like 90% of the placements. Then in finals, it's more so just the show where you get to do your posing and stuff and your family gets to come see you. And then at finals, there is a small amount of judging where in like your class, for example... They'll have like height classes, like, you know, people 5'2 and under, then 5'5 five, five to 5'2, five, then 5'8 five, to 5'5. Five, five. So there might be class A, class B, class C, class D. So they take the winner of class A, B, C, D, and then at finals, they present those four against each other, and then they judge for who wins the overall. So there's a very small amount of judging at finals, so you do have to show up in good shape. But the bulk of the placements is already done before you get to finals. So... We did a different strategy in the afternoon. You came for finals looking way better. Yeah, but the judging was already done. The judging was already done. So it was definitely a bummer because if the show was ran better, your body wouldn't have had such a strong cortisol response. Also, don't forget the random frickin' 10-minute intermission right before we were supposed to go on stage. Yes, they lined us up on stage. (laughs) Yeah, go ahead. You talk about that. So... You're feeding me gushers because you realize, okay, we just don't need to piss your body off. We know what to do for the next show. And Mm -hmm. that was also the intent of the first show was to experiment. You didn't know, you know, we never did a show together. Mm -hmm. We do know my body has, my body has the strongest cortisol response out of anyone you've ever trained. Yeah. So I've trained people for over 150 shows and I've had over 3000 clients, including eating disordered and traumatic experiences. Yeah. Uh, like people who've had like lost limbs and stuff Mm -hmm. and you're like I can't remember anyone's body with a more aggressive response Mm -hmm. to cortisol yeah and I've I've gone through a lot of trauma 
and I mm-hmm. in my life. So I think it's it's like it's almost like the learned response. And survival. you had a doctor even tell you that your cortisol levels were off the charts. My, yeah, the, I forget what podcast it was, but the doctor literally verbatim out of his mouth it was um what when did you do your blood draw for this cortisol it four times the limit yeah four so, times the limit which is yeah. astronomical yep. so your body is uh, a super producer <laughs> yeah for cortisol um so it's funny because uh, you, you well i was just gonna say you and i kind of we check ourselves very often mm-hmm. and i would be I would hesitate to sound like we were like whiny little babies about things. But that's why the reason why I like to back it up and say, no, literally we've had blood tests done and you were four times the limit, like the normal upper limit. Like four say times. something could be five to a hundred. You were at 400. <laughs> yeah. My, do- my doctor was concerned. And yes. There's nothing to do. No. It, he, he's like, get out of the situation you're in. Yeah. And I you're can't. like, this is a Tuesday, bro. Like, this is like a normal day. I yeah. can't. Yeah. Do you know a hitman? Like. <laughs> yeah. But um. So we. So given that we know your history and background, mm-hmm. and then to see that response on Saturday, we now know. Okay, this is a predictable response. Yeah. That we now have to adjust for. Yeah. So that's what I was gonna say about because uh, you did the. You did a first experiment. Now the second experiment, we just don't piss my body off. Don't do anything different and then pump it full of sugar, like fast yes. sugar. Yes. So that my veins come out and things fill out. So we timed it. You were feeding me gushers backstage mm-hmm. before we went out. And then it's, okay, 10 minute intermission. What? So yeah. then that timing was off. Like, and what's frustrating about that is they literally were telling you, okay, hurry up backstage, hurry up yes. backstage. Then they say, line up next to the curtain. So yes. you're... Like you're at the curtain. Yes. And they say, okay, make sure you're here when we call your number. And then all of a sudden there's a pause and they go, oh, hey, good news, bad news. Good news, you're here. Bad news, you're going to wait 10, 15 minutes. We're like, what the hell? <laughs> it was so, like, never experienced anything. Like that. Oh, that's so frustrating. Like, I'm like, don't you have this written down on a pamphlet? Like, like, did you hand out, like, something to the audience to show, like, when things were? <laughs> so, so it, it was, it was so bad. Yeah. It was so bad. Yes. Uh, but, yeah. But also, it was like all things fighting against us. Like, we knew it was that outside window of leanness. Yeah, so you're showing up at 90%, and with all this happening, your 90% got dropped to like 85. Easy, and easy peasy. Thankfully, we still made it to national. Somehow. <laughs> <laughs> By the grace of God, as they say. I got a trophy, and I got a medal, <laughs> and I made it to nationals. Yes. So, met the goal, but holy shit. This is it what was, happens when you have two people who like to control everything. Oh. And it showed up where, thankfully, your 85% was enough. But we're not used to doing anything 85%. So this is, like, earth-shattering for us. It was the worst. Yeah. But at least we found the strategy now. So we know that your body did not did not respond well to being dehydrated. Yeah. So you were actually sipping on water, <laughs> water backstage. <laughs> so, which I'm sure everybody thought was completely insane. <laughs> Uh, or they thought like we had wine because sometimes people will drink wine thinking that that's going to promote their veins. Oh but yeah, it, that's right. Yeah, it's not. It's not the best. Approach. No, that's Don't not do good. that. So, um, but, <laughs> um, but yeah. So you were drinking water, and then we just used sugar loading because the what we used the first part on Friday was rice and bananas and a little bit of honey. But by the time you mix the honey with the rice and bananas, it's not a fast digesting carb. It's delicious. So it's, yeah. (laughs) So it's slow carbs because you're wanting to, you're wanting to get above baseline energy. You're getting into the window of how many carbs the body can hold in the muscles. And then you want to kind of tiptoe to the top of that window. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of micro control that, if you can develop stages of control, you can get a better outcome. Mm. That didn't work. We know the cortisol said screw you. Mm. So when you switch to a sugar loading, what essentially you're going to do is you're not going to get as much of a glycogen storage response, but you get a lot of veins popping out and you don't have to worry about kind of aggravating the body and spiking the cortisol. So not as full, but some full. Uh, and then not as dry, but some dry, mm. but a lot of veins sticking out. Mm-hmm. And if the person's already lean enough, the veins can be seen well. Mm. So the sugar loading strategy works if somebody's lean. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. If you're not lean, it's a horrible strategy, but you probably shouldn't be on stage. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, which which yeah. dovetails into the next topic. <laughs> Uh-oh, what's that? People uh, who shouldn't have been on stage? <laughs> one, people that shouldn't have been on stage. And a million freaking rice cakes backstage. Oh, man, everybody was eating rice cakes. Every yeah. single person. And like four hours before they went on. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I believe uh, I know why people think the rice cake is helpful. They, I think they believe, okay, I'm going to stop drinking water like 24 hours before stage. Yeah. And then I'm going to eat this really dry food. Yeah. And my body will process that food with some water, mm-hmm. which it has to get from somewhere. So it's going to get it hopefully from under the skin. Uh, it, it, the body doesn't do that that well. It comes from the muscles and under the skin. Uh, the body can't really kind of differentiate between the two. But um, so they're, gonna, they're thinking that the rice cake is drying them out essentially. But it can't because of the low calorie count. It's only 35 calories per like, rice cake. It's not yeah. going to be enough. And how many calories did I have? You had over 1,000 grams of carbs. Yes. <laughs> and they were eating 5 grams of carbs. Yes. So you had over 4,000 calories yep. uh, spaced across Friday and Saturday morning. Yeah. And I looked and great looked until great. <laughs> I looked great until the show freaking got out of hand and they were yeah. all assholes. Like you woke up Saturday morning and we looked bomb and awesome. like crushed it. Like it was. I was excellent. so excited. I was like, yeah. "This is going to be a good day." Yeah, and then bam! Until everyone was an asshole. <laughs> yeah, cortisol got us. So yep. then, uh, so that's why we didn't try that strategy again because like four thousand calories. Yeah, we just had to avoid cortisol spiking. Yeah. And that was uh, a much better outcome. So we're going to practice that again this upcoming show in Shelby. So we'll do another sugar load, see how your body responds to that. We'll already be another week leaner. Um, so that'll be good. And then it's four weeks till nationals. Let's talk about then. So made our goal, learned a lot. Yeah. Uh, do not recommend the Ruby Classic to anybody. Unfortunately, I'm sorry for the promoters of that, but that was a really bad experience. Really so bad. I, I wouldn't typically recommend Right. A show that I did not enjoy to a client. Right. Yeah. Um, and I feel like it's my duty to say that since we have a podcast and people listen and yeah, compete. True. So um, I'm going to heat up coffee. And then okay. let's talk about over the next few weeks then, what are we doing either the same or differently oh. between the show we have coming up on this Saturday yes. and Nationals. Love it. That's a good segue as she goes, heats up her coffee. So um, leading into this show, we had been doing a diet. Uh, The most recent version of the diet has been breakfast is Greek yogurt and two rice cakes. Then she has a Progenix protein shake somewhere, whether it's before that or after that around her workout. Then for lunch, we have bonza pasta, which is a chickpea pasta, which is high protein with chicken breast and vodka sauce, which is like a kind of a red sauce. And she'll eat that for lunch. And then for dinner is chicken and apples. And we just switched to apples here like the last week or two before this first show. What it did is it put us down to around 1450. So 1,450 calories. You were maintaining 7,000 to 10,000 daily step count. We were weight training, upper body, lower body, alternating every day, but only five days a week. Mm -hmm. And our workouts are three warm-up rounds, three hard rounds, and maybe a finisher set. In total, they take about 30, maybe 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. So that was our approach to this point. And that got you lean enough to do well, qualify for nationals at a regional show. So now our goal is, okay, is that going to be a strategy that over the next five weeks going to get us lean enough for nationals or is there something more that we can do yes so the more that we're going to do is actually refining the time frames of things we want to develop greater consistency to when meals are and then my job is to say like okay how is she feeling hunger and energy wise today if she feels like she has any available energy we are going to add extra step count, maybe do our uh, bow flex for 20 minutes. We're going to try to end every day emptied out. But within that context, you have to front load the day. So to make it somewhat short, because <laughs> I'm already long, is we wake up in the morning, we want to do the bulk of our movement, the bulk of our food early in the day. 
And what that does is when we wake up, we're dehydrated, our body's angry from the day before, you're in a very stressed state. You want to get out of that stressed state as fast as possible to reduce cortisol, and actually that allows for fat burning. So when people skip breakfast and they just continue the stressed state that their body is in throughout the day, they increase and continue to promote cortisol usage as fuel, water like water dumping under the skin they're going to be watery around their waistline they're not going to be hungry because their body's dehydrated so it's a false signal of not being hungry uh and it just perpetuates all their problems so we don't want to do that so we're going to we're going to move early eat early we want our food windows between the progenics protein shake after the workout the breakfast and the lunch to be small windows but then you have a really large window in the afternoon so now that the cortisol is as low as it's going to be, the body's in a happy state. We slowly let that anger build over the afternoon because it's burning body fat, burning body fat, burning body fat. Then it says like, hey, I don't want to, this is, this is bad. We're losing a lot of fat right now. We have to start to protect against this. Let's start producing cortisol. So since you were so nice to it in the beginning of the day, it doesn't start that response until you're far into the afternoon. So you get a good two, three, four hour chunk of extremely great fat loss. And then as the body starts to produce cortisol, we eat dinner. And then it goes, oh, okay, well, we can stop that. Let the cortisol come back down. Let's burn this dinner for fuel. But then all of a sudden it says, well, crap, there wasn't really a lot of fuel in there. We already shut down the cortisol thing. Let's start that back up. But then by then you go to bed. (laughs) And then while you're sleeping, the energy demand is much lower because you're asleep. Uh, you're still burning calories, you're still going to burn some body fat, but the cortisol buildup isn't as large. So over the span of sleeping six to eight hours, it does build up by the morning, which is why then the next morning you start the process over again. Uh, But that was my short version (laughs) of what we're going to be doing is you eat early, move early, and then you slowly let the body get annoyed the rest of the day. (laughs) Perfect. Yes. So that was my intent of being easy to understand that was easy to understand i don't think you were wordy good cool okay yeah just so we're just being more uh precise yes so sometimes like if you had lunch at at noon or at two it didn't really matter too much to this point but now it's going to be like oh okay hey you know if we if we wake up at 5 30 we want to get into our workout at six we're going to be done with our workout at 6.45, so you're going to have progenics. Then we're going to walk Daisy from 7 to 7.30, 35-ish. Uh, then we're going to come back have breakfast at 8. Then you're going to get into work and do other odds and ends, whatever you want to do. But then we're going to have dinner between 11 and 12. But Lunch? We, uh, yeah, sorry, lunch. Between 11 and 12, but we don't want to be outside of that. Like, okay. So it's 11 to 12, but like for real, for real. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it was one or two. Yeah, and that's reasonable because somebody might be coming to the house to check out something or you had a phone call at work. And now it's like, okay, well, you might have to mute in between the bites <laughs> uh, and actually eat the meal like at work. Uh, so you got to make that work. So the time frames become smaller to get more precision into the cortisol control. Because if you control cortisol, you're then controlling what the body is burning as fuel, mm-hmm. which then allows you to control it to make sure it's body fat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So that's uh. That's what it is. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, from there, it's basically just seeing how your body feels. Yeah. If your body starts to get watery and like you start getting like super d- drained, well then okay, maybe we have to uh, take a rest day. You know, maybe we won't weight train that day. Um, or like we use the snacks of like carrot chips and like uh, peppers and stuff. So I might say, hey, if we're having lunch at noon, you're not having dinner till seven. Uh, can you like go ahead, throw in between three and four, throw in okay. 200 calories worth of veggies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the veggies are good because um, it's even though it's 200 calories, like you can have 200 calories of anything that's still 200 calories. Mm-hmm. But veggies are a lot of fiber. It's a lot of bulk, so you feel like you're eating more than what you actually are. Mm-hmm. To whereas if you had 200 calories of like you know chocolate it's going to be one little corner of a square, and then you're going to realize you didn't eat anything. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you have 200 calories of uh, a low nutrient-density food, meaning it's a lot of volume, Mm -hmm. so imagine eating 200 calories of lettuce (laughs) versus 200 calories of pizza. Yeah, (laughs) very different. Yes, so the lettuce is going to fill you up a lot more. Yeah. It's uh, it's going to be fun. It's um, interesting. Yeah, and we were laughing because it's kind of, 
we're um, I don't I don't know what the right word is, uh, uh, but is we are excited by the concept that now the misery really begins. Yeah, <laughs> like so now weird. the now the diet really starts. Yeah, yeah. and after the show on Saturday, uh, I just. I had like some Doritos. I didn't even have a brownie. We thought maybe Chick Fil A. I was so full from yeah. all of the food I ate. Yeah, all the rice. Like, on show the rice day. I mean, plus like, the sugary yeah. meal. It was cheesecake. Oh yeah, you want to share what our sugar load meal was? Hell yeah! It was it Daya dairy free cheesecake mm-hmm. and Cool Whip and graham apple cr- pie filling and graham cracker crust. And graham cracker crust sprinkles it was delicious like i would have that for dessert on a holiday like it was so good it was wonderful so i i did the diet with her uh you know for support sake of course yeah and you hit your goal (laughs) which was great you hit your goal by show day well thank you very much so good job yeah but uh but that was a wonderful wonderful meal (laughs) it was was amazing we had that and then took a nap yes and then went back for finals and i looked so much better yeah, like the combination of the sugar to calm the cortisol and, the and then the nap to just bring your CNS stress down. Yeah, we showed up to finals looking like what we had intended to look like for prejudging. Yeah. Um, what we had looked like Saturday morning just without, yeah. you know, that stress of the show. But we learned. Uh, but that was delicious. Yeah. But because of that, like I was, I was too full too. Yeah. Like after the show, I talked... All I wanted was Chick Fil A on Saturday because yeah. it's closed Sunday. That's all I wanted, and then after the show, I was like, "I'm not hungry." <laughs> yeah, and I was like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> so we went yeah. back to the room. I had Doritos. You had some of the brownies I I made. Um, and I think you fell asleep at like. I, I fell know. asleep covered in Dorito dust. It was at like, like eight forty-five. Eight. Like, like <laughs> so, yeah. it was a pathetic scene. But, <laughs> It was good. But I'm also glad you mentioned CNS stress because yeah. uh, last night, so after we got home from the show, it was a very long day. Oh, it was incredibly long. We drove, long day. picked up Daisy. We went to Five Guys. Yeah, that's right. Um, and because I said, maybe I can just have some protein pancakes. And you said, oh, no, no, no. No, no, no. You did the typical like type A personality is I didn't feel my best on show day. So now I'm not going to eat anything because I'm so aggravated. I want to be shredded. And it's like, no, that's that's counterintuitive. That's not going to help. Like, trust me. Yeah. So I was like, you got to eat. Yeah. Perfect. So we went to Five Guys. Yep. It was delicious until... It wasn't. Until, <laughs> until it wasn't. Until I sat there trying to not be nauseous for 15... Oh, yeah. It was 15, 20 minutes. 20 minutes. Yeah. But or yeah. explain why I was nauseous, even though I just ate. Uh, yeah, so the the essentially the the randomness of Saturday is very stressful in the body, mm-hmm. and one of the ways in which it produces stress is dehydration. Mm-hmm. So even though you were sipping water backstage, you weren't sipping the equivalent water to what was needed to process all the sugar that we ate mm-hmm. at lunch. Then, after the show, you drank, uh, I think, some tummy tea to help your belly. Yeah. (laughs) You were feeling bloated. And then maybe, like, three sips of a Diet Pepsi, ate some Doritos, and fell asleep. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, we were already, like, coming into that dehydrated. Then we went to bed even more dehydrated. So, as you were sleeping, the Doritos were digesting and pulling more water out of you. Mm -hmm. And then Sunday morning, we had to get up and get moving really early so we could go get Daisy back in Carolinas. Um, So, then, during the drive... Uh, even though it's okay and we totally don't mind each other if we have to stop to pee, we still don't like drinking a ton of water because then you have to stop on a 10-hour drive to become a 12-hour or 13-hour drive. Mm-hmm. So you drank, I think, like one bottle of water, and yeah. that was it. So we showed up to Five Guys knowing we needed food, but incredibly, insanely dehydrated. And then your body's register of what is the state of my body right now is skewed beyond belief. So you wouldn't even have really even recognized that you were dehydrated. So then we ate, you know, a clump of potatoes in, in the form of a French fries mm-hmm. and a burger. Like, but you had a burger with lettuce. Uh, so then all of a sudden the body's like, okay, well, I need more water to digest this food, but I have none. I'm done. I'm out. So it pulled whatever was out of the blood and, like, 
whatever was left. So you got low blood sugar. Mm-hmm. So it's basically like a diabetic response. Mm-hmm. And so you felt like absolute crap. Yeah. So I got you some Sprite. So and I sat there on sipping Sprite. on Sprite until I felt like I could get in the car and go home. Yes. <laughs> so that was your fun. Yeah. Was we missed Chick Fil A because we were too tired. We just ate some Doritos, mm-hmm. and then your your meal where you get to like quote unquote pig out at Five Guys. You just got sick. <laughs> yeah, but it was good for a little bit. Uh, yeah. And how did that help the CNS? Um, so essentially, we're coming into today where your body's going to say whatever that was over this weekend. I didn't really like it, but I am at a state now where I don't feel overfed and fat and disgusting. I don't feel underfed and starving to death. I'm not so hydrated that I don't want to look at water, but I'm not so dehydrated that I want to like drink the water like in the puddle outside. <laughs> so we're coming into today more neutral. Mm-hmm. And then we get to kind of start the process for next week. Okay. Yes. Cool. Great. I'm glad we remembered to talk about those things because those yeah. were those are big elements. Well, it was fun. Like it was. Um, if it sounds chaotic in the podcast, that's exactly what it felt like. <laughs> it was complete chaos on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, but you did well. Like we said, we qualified for nationals. Present yourself well. We got a trophy for downstairs in the gym jam. Mm-hmm. So that'll be fun to put that up. Later, goal. Cool. Yeah. So now it's um, another week of just. Try to fine-tune everything, show up the next week, try that sugar-loading method again, Mm -hmm. Uh, fine-tune whatever we learn next week, and then use that approach for nationals. Yeah, and I also have a final exam to take this week. Oh, yeah, you got a lot of life stuff outside of uh, just this So, thank goodness, this Saturday is for fun. (laughs) Yes, (laughs) that'll be perfect. But, yeah, so that's it. So 24 weeks to diet for this show, Mm -hmm. and you did it. You met the goal, so congratulations. Yeah. Yeah, now we go into this next one, learn a lot, but we already know we're going to be going to national. So in December, we're going to be going to Irving, Texas. Mm-hmm. Yes. So we will probably see nothing of Texas I except for the inside of the convention center. I don't know what is even in Irving. <laughs> yeah. It's far away from all the other major cities. I have no clue. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, but um, I think they have like powerlifting bench nationals and some stuff, or like events there every year. But, uh, but yes, that'll be fun. I'm excited for nationals. It'll be fun. Our goal is just to get on stage. So we have no expectations for nationals, given that you did your second workout of the year in April. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. made it to nationals. Yes. That is the goal. Get on a national stage. Yeah. And that's just going to be really cool because you'll have competed at a national level in women's physique. And now you'll be competing at a national level in women's figure. Yeah. So that's that's neat. That's what I want to be able to say I did. Yeah. So... Very, very cool. Yeah. Okay, so then what we'll do is next week we'll be checking back in, and it'll be the wrap-up of the second show. Which is wild. Which will hopefully be less chaotic. I know. <laughs> Please let it be less chaotic. Yes. So, uh, but thank you for everybody for listening. And, um, you know, as always, if you have any questions, just let us know. Our email is brutalironjim at gmail.com. You can go to the website to learn more about us, see other resources, and can always contact us there. And that's www.brutalironjim.com. Cool. And then we also have uh, Instagram and YouTube. We post new and different information all the time. You'll see show updates and whatnot. I think today I'm going to do a photo dump of the weekend from the extra fun photos outside of the uh, basic competition photos. So follow us on Instagram and YouTube under the name Bird Iron Gym. Pretty consistent there. <laughs> so I think if you just type that in anywhere, you're going to find us. But uh, we appreciate you listening, and thank you, Meredith, for being here. Uh, thank you. Yes. And then as always, I hope this was helpful. And thank you for listening.